Jesus heads into Jerusalem. And his heading into Jerusalem gives new meaning for us in the midst of suffering. Because as he goes to suffer on the cross, we're invited to deeper intimacy with him. His suffering doesn't distance him from us. Rather, it moves him towards us. And that'll change you as a person. It really will because you'll stop comparing your suffering to other people. And rather, whether someone has suffered worse than you or less than you, you will become like Jesus and just start moving towards them and go, I hate pain too. I see your suffering and I, I hate it too. You'll give over the comparison game because you'll find new meaning in your suffering through intimacy with Jesus rather than comparing your suffering to someone else. Palm Sunday increases intimacy both with Jesus and other people in suffering. And then lastly, it infuses purpose in suffering. Suffering doesn't make sense and the Bible doesn't pretend that it does. But as we see, you know, as we say suffering, make it make sense. Our tendency is to go, we want it to make sense because we think it's pointless. There's no point to it, which is why we try and move through it, which is why we try and escape it. But the opposite is, is absolutely true. Every ounce of your suffering is saturated with purpose. God doesn't waste one ounce of your pain. None of it is pointless. In the weird way in God's economy through the cross, things get flipped upside down because the ultimate act of unjust suffering is Jesus being handed over to sinful men to die. But that wasn't pointless. That was part of God's eternal plan, infusing the worst act of suffering with the most purpose that had been building for thousands of years. At Pentecost, Peter preaches from Acts 2 and says this, though he, Jesus, was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, purpose, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. Suffering. From the human side, it seems senseless, but from God's side, it is not pointless. It is filled with purpose and meaning. That through Jesus' death at the hands of sinful men, you and I by faith are reconciled to God. We are eternally his. He is with us in every moment of suffering. There is nothing we can do to, to, to put a barrier back between him and us. Even in when we fall short, he still forgives us and fills us with his spirit. He lives in us. Jesus went to the cross to unite us to God by defeating sin and death and the devil. And Jesus did this all on purpose. His face like flint to Jerusalem. He enters on Palm Sunday. None of our suffering compares to the suffering that Jesus went through. But in the weird way, all of our suffering finds meaning in Jesus. The New Testament writers like James and the author of Hebrews confront that when they say suffering is not pointless. Actually, every time you go through a hard thing in your life, God is using that to make you more like him. Every single time. Now, the process is slow, but it's not pointless. Peter says that suffering grows our faith. And Paul in Romans 5 zeroes us in on hope. Suffering actually zeroes us in on Christ returning, the day when all suffering will be obliterated forever. And our hope isn't wishing. Jesus went into Jerusalem to suffer and die. He was put in the tomb, and third, three days later, he rose again from the dead defeating sin, death, and the devil. And then 40 days later, he ascended to the right hand of God, the throne of grace that we can boldly approach. And he sits at the, at, as the king at the right hand of God, waiting, waiting for a day on God's calendar that I don't know, you don't know, 
but God knows, and as surely as we're here today, this day will happen, a day when Christ will return. Not entering to Jerusalem, but bringing a holy city with him. The, the new city. And he won't be coming on a donkey sitting low. He will be coming on a war horse to defeat sin and death and the devil with finality. When he returns, he will banish and obliterate all suffering. That day is coming. And on that day, all your relationships that are broken, they'll be healed. All sickness that you're suffering, gone. Death, banished. All suffering eliminated, which means everything you're going through right now has an expiration date. And that gives meaning in the midst of some of the hardest things. Your suffering is not pointless. Jesus gets you in the midst of your suffering. And so when we, when we go, when we understand that, we might not be able to make sense of suffering. And yet at the same time, we aren't without meaning in the midst of suffering. And so like the crowds in verse 38, we can say this looking back and we can say this looking forward to his second coming. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord because when he comes again, there will be peace in heaven and glory. The glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. Suffering, sin, death, gone forever. And so we say, Hosanna. Let's pray.